Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be going over the existing version of solution for demo problem 1. This problem is a score keeping application. We have an existing script file called scores.py which keeps track of player scores. Let me first show you how to download scores.py. Go to the course website and find dictionaries 1 lecture entry as part of schedule page. Then click on code link. You'll be able to download scores.py script file by left clicking on it, right clicking on draw and left clicking save link as. Please pause the lecture video here and download scores.py and launch idle editor to open it. There is another script file called scores underscore dictionary dot py. This is the updated version of the solution which uses dictionary data structure. I'll be covering the update part of the demo as part of the next video for today's lecture. In this video, I'll be giving you an overview of the code within scores.py script file. By now, all of you should be familiar with the fact that exams test you on reading code. If you think you need additional practice for reading code, please pause the lecture video here and try to go through scores.py on your own. Then come back and watch me go through the overview. Let me first run this script by clicking on run and clicking on run module. I'm going to rearrange the output window in such a way that we are able to see both the output and the program here. The first user input command that I want to go through is the help command. The help command enables you to get the list of commands that user can enter as input for this particular program. Let me tell you about the set command. Set command enables you to set a particular player score. You'll be typing in set space player name space the score. If I type in set space Alice space 10, that's going to set Alice's score to a value of 10. The get command enables you to get the score of a particular player. Get space Alice as input is going to retrieve the value of 10 here. The high command is going to enable you to determine the winner. Alice is the winner right now. If I type in Q as the user input, that's going to terminate the execution of the program. Let's go through the code inside scores.py. We have a function definition for main function. Then we have a function definition for print underscore help function. We are invoking the main function way down at the bottom here. So let's go through the code inside the main function. Observe that I am declaring the variables Alice and Bob as global. I have initialized the variables Alice and Bob with a value of 0 outside of any of the function definition. I am simply letting Python know that I want to use the global scope for these two variables here. Then we have an infinite while loop. How can we say this is an infinite while loop? Whenever you have loop structure as while true, that's going to be an infinite while loop. Somewhere within the while loop body, you're going to use break statement in order to terminate the while loop execution. The first line of code within the while loop body is invoking the input function in order to obtain user input. Recall that the input function call always returns data type as string. We are capturing the return value into variable cmd. What are we doing with that return string value? We are invoking strip method. Recall that the strip method enables you to remove leading and trailing white spaces from your string. Strip method call returns a brand new string. What are we doing with that? We are invoking the lower method call. The lower method call is going to enable you to convert the case of your characters into lower cases. Lower method call also returns a brand new string. What are we doing with that? We are invoking the split method call. Recall that the split method takes a string as an argument, which is going to be the separator based on which you'll be splitting the input string into a list of strings. The best way for you to go through somebody else's program is to use print function calls extensively. I'm going to use print function call to display cmd variable value. 
after line number one here let me also display type of cmd i'm going to repeat this print function call after we go through the split method here every time when you change the program you'll have to save it and run it from scratch so that the updated version of the program is taken into account if i type in set space alice space 10 as the input we are going to get two new output lines the first line is simply going to display the user input inside the variable cmd type of cmd is going to be string after you go through the split method your cmd variable now contains a list of strings and the type of that particular variable is going to be list here what if i type in a bunch of spaces and then type in set alice and then a bunch of spaces that is going to be taken care of by the strip method call here and you're going to get the same display output for the cmd variable which is holding the list of strings after the split method call let's go through one more execution i'm going to type in set alice 10 in all caps that is still going to be all right because we are using the lower method call to make sure that we are changing the character cases to lower cases here let me go ahead and quit the current version of execution by typing q i'm just going to get rid of the print function call after line one let's also get rid of the type as part of the second print function call here what are we having as part of the list of strings inside the variable cmd here we have the command which is going to be at index position zero then we have some other additional details in the other item positions within the list we have this really big conditional which is taking care of various commands here how are we checking the user input for command observe that we are using indexing we are saying cmd of zero to retrieve the command which is at the index position zero here if the command is q we simply want the break statement because we want to terminate the execution of the while loop here other than the while loop you only have one print function call which displays exiting so after displaying exiting the program is going to terminate because main function call is the only function call here what's going to happen when user enters help this input command you're going to look up the command in index position zero and you're writing an elif branch for your conditional saying that elif command of zero equal to equal to help then invoke the print underscore help function the print underscore help function simply displays the command details here what are we doing if the user enters set as the command that's going to be another branch of your conditional here you're first of all extracting the name of the player which is at index position one then the score which is at index position two we have to be careful to use integer type cast function to convert the score into an integer split method call always returns a list of strings then we have a nested conditional here the nested conditional is simply checking whether the variable name is storing alice if so then we are setting the score value into the variable alice if it is bob we are setting the score inside the variable bob observe that we have an else branch here which is just displaying unknown name so if i were to run the program and try to set score for mina by typing in set mina 10 that's going to just display unknown name here let me go ahead and quit the current version of execution let's go through the next branch of the conditional which is about the get command we are checking for the name of the player which is going to come from index position one in cmd list then we are simply having another nested conditional here which is checking if name equal to equal to string alice if so we are just displaying alice's score if name is bob then we are displaying bob score if we are trying to 
access any other player score we are just simply displaying unknown name here what are we doing with the high command that's the last lf branch of your conditional here whenever you have two variables when you compare them you're going to only have three possible options right first one is that alice is greater than bob which implies that alice won second one is bob greater than alice which implies that bob won the third one is just displaying tie here let me save the current version of the program i'm going to show you tie output here i'm going to set alice to 10 right now if we execute high command alice is going to win what if i set set bob to 20 if we try high command bob is going to win if i set alice's score to 20 and try the high command we are supposed to get a value as tie here let me see why we are not getting it here let me try to set the scores one more time set bob 20 and set alice 20 let me type in high observe that now we are getting tie i think i entered incorrect input for the previous command let me go ahead and quit the current version of execution here what do we have to do if we want to include the player Mina as part of this particular game? We'll have to define a variable Mina outside the function definitions, include that as part of the global declaration and handle that inside three elif branches here to make sure that we are able to set Mina score and get Mina score and determine who is the winner among those players, right? That feels very cumbersome. We are definitely not going to do that. That's why we'll be using the dictionary data structure to improvise this program in such a way that we are able to support any number of players. I'll wrap up this video here. In the next video, we'll go through the dictionary version solution.